Glory to God. Psalm 122. There are set thrones of judgment. Psalm 122 verse 5 says, For there are set thrones of judgment. The thrones of the house of David. There are set thrones of judgment. Every child of God has the over your life. Every child of God has set thrones over you where God judges you. Every child of God has it. There are set thrones of judgment. Now, I want to deal with something because Ananias and Sapphira, the throne that was being targeted by the father was finances. And saints, some of you all, your eyes going to open up this, this brief couple minutes. I'm going to be on here for about five minutes. Ananias and Sapphira the throne that was being judged by the father was finances. It was a financial throne. In the financial throne is where God deals with sowing and the management of money, how you spend, how you acknowledge God with your finances and how you praise God with your finances. Think about that. The set thrones have different type of departments, but what God was dealing with in Acts 4 was he began to introduce the church to sowing. The Bible said that they took all their money and laid it at the apostles' feet. So that that was, and then Ananias and Sapphira thought that it was wrong. And then God judged them on that throne of finances and they dropped dead. What I'm showing you that there is a financial judgment that every child of God will meet. I met mine, I promise you. And, and watch this here. I know that there's more, but I ain't never scared. <laughs> I'm the biggest sore talking to you right now. Give me your sewing account that you saw in a year. I promise you I saw that in a, in, in a matter of days. I promise you that. Like, no lie. Give me your sewing account that you sew in a year. I sew that in a matter of days. I promise you that. No lie. No, I, I'm actually exaggerating the fact because I sew more than that in a couple of days. Or I might even sew that in a day. And I'm not talking about on myself. I'm talking about on the work of God. I'm talking about on obedience instructions that the Father had me do. I'm talking about kingdom business. I remember the day the Holy Spirit told me to give away all my clothes. Now I got clothes running all throughout my house. You think about it if I didn't listen to God when he told me to give. Man, I remember the day when God told me to give away all my Jordans. I got Jordans all over my house. Big Jordans, big Jordans. Johnny was telling me he was flexing one time about Jordans. I laughed in my heart. <laughs> Johnny one time was telling me how he the biggest Jordan dripper. I just laughed. I was like, I'll let you believe what you want. I'll let you believe what you want, John. That you believe duck lips? 
Duck lips right here look like a full blown Jamaican boy. <laughs> look, look like a full blown Jamaican with a rice and peas. Let you believe what you want. Just let you believe what you want. I know the biggest big drips. <laughs> Acts chapter four. <laughs> <laughs> there was a throat a judge. <laughs> it's the throne of judgment. It says, why when you be going inside the gas station, some of them gas station owners be hideous. And the other day I went inside them and I like what you see, what you see, somebody shooting? Who got the pistol? It's only me in here. Ain't nobody got no pistol, man. Why you look at me like that? He said, no, no, I just saw something. I just saw something. I said, what you see? He said, nothing, buddy. Nothing. You know, over over, over there, we see things. We see things. I just saw something big. I'm like, what you see something big, man? Man, come on, take the $5 and let me go about my business, man. You up here trying, you trying to call the Makhdi. You trying to call the Makhdi and all that, man. You trying to up here work Indian witchcraft on me. I'm not having it. There are set thrones of judgment. When I'm sowing, I'm taking authority over the throne for finances and provision. When I'm sowing. I want to say something else to you. Seed time means that the seed is a divine clock. I want to tell you what the Lord told me. Seed time means that the seed is a divine clock. So that money that I'm putting into my man of God, into the kingdom, into the work of God on the earth, there's a clock that I'm activating and I'm scheduling my own pleasure, my own prosperity, according to Job 36, 11. A lot of people are waiting for God because they don't know what the divine clock is. It's the seed. Remember, it's seed time. Every time is revealed through a clock. Wow. So, so, so the fact that the seed was given before time is revealed that show you that seed is the original clock. So Adam wasn't waiting on God because he was moving with the seed. Oh, Jesus. He was sowing. So you never saw Adam saying, Father, I'm asking you to do this for me. I'm praying for you to do this for me because he didn't have to do that. He, he, he understood the divine clock. It was seed time. So time was not revealed. It was seed that was revealed. Then time came on the scene. So if I move with the seed, I already move into what time is supposed to produce. I reign on my throne financially through sowing, through the seed. Now the Lord going to have you have a breakthrough in finances. And I prophesied to you all in JHM. The Lord spoke to me and told me there will not be one breakthrough. There will not be two breakthrough. He said there'll be over three times this year where financial overflow will hit you in an overflowing manner. And the Lord said, I'm going to check you to see what you're going to do with it. Listen to what I say. I didn't say only three times. I said over three times. So that means for some of y'all, it's going to be over seven times. It's going to be over eight times. But it's not going to be less than three. That's what the father said. And he going to see what you're going to do with the finances. I'm not telling you that I'm, I'm not predicting this. I'm telling you that it's already scheduled to happen. Those of you all that saw it into me, that I'm your pastor, I'm your prophet. One, 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 somebody I love, you, you be on here. I ain't going to expose your name. Wrote me, told me some, uh, uh probably hey, God ain't doing nothing for me. What, what God going to do for me? I said, what, what, you ain't a sower.
We need another ministry called slap you on the back of your neck. Neck. And that's the bad neck. There's another neck and I'm not. I said, you're not no sower. That's one of my pet peeves. I hate when people try to act like God holding them back and da, da, da. You're not moving in God's system, baby. I don't, I don't want to hear it. And then, then, then why people that's not so has always got an excuse. You know, I've been sowing, but I just sow all. I sow here. I sow here. You're not no sower. You go find a farmer and the farmer all over in 15 fields. Talking some, I planted my seed here. No, no. The, the farmer got one field and that's where he planted all his seed. Am I right or am I right? You go find a farmer that got 15 fields that he keep on planting two times. I'm, I'm over here. I'm going to go check over there and see if it, it don't harvest. I'm going to check. No, they got one field. So I won't hear it. I won't hear that you don't sold it to no 15. No 15. I don't, I don't give a dog on. I'm going to slap you on the back of your neck. Now, I told her, you ain't no saw. You're not no saw. I don't want to hear it. I, 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 I'm going to tell, tell some of y'all in 2020, stop acting like God holding you back when you holding God back. Don't act like God ain't giving you no house and giving you no car and giving you all the stuff that you desire. You can't get those stuff if you're not no sower. If you're not putting no money into the kingdom, into your man of God, into your prophet, you're not going to walk in no financial prosperity God's way. You're going to have to yield to the Babylonian system, which is a fallen system, which is a satanic system. You ain't going to get it from God's system. You need to know that this apostolic. I asked her, I said, when, when the last seed you sow? She going to send me something from 2016. I felt a slap come on me like never before. I had started to think that Ike was wrong. Now you doggone going to tell me that you watching me. I done preached my heart out. You done saw me sweat, blood and tears, preaching the gospel. And you only saw one seed. You, you've been following me since 2016. You only saw one seed. You going to send me a, 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 a seed that you saw in 2016? This 2020? All the revelation I done gave? You mean to tell me you let 365 days go by? 365 days. You didn't do, you didn't engage God one time and you got the nurse to act like God holding you back? And God up in here talking daily through Prophet Joshua Holmes as Prophet Joshua Holmes and you ain't move? And we got people coming into the ministry that's only here three, four days. You've been here four years. They having more results than you, and you've been here four years because you're following me. You're not connected with me. Man, you know, you know how that stuff be hurting? That stuff hurt. People don't know how they hurt God. That stuff hurt like a mug. You sit right there, all this glory and power I carry, and you never sow no seed into me. All this manifestation and revelation and flowing knowledge and you and you got the nerves to think that God the one holding you back. And that most people like that be suicidal. Baby, I would want to kill myself too. If I was sitting in the presence of God and I didn't honor him, I would want to kill me too. I'm sitting in the presence of the king. The Bible said, and, and, and oh, Cynthia, I want to thank you again. You sold $5,000 last year. I remember your seed and God remember your seed. That's why I'm uttering it. Imagine. You sitting at the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ and you ain't budging. It, the Lord Jesus talking to you about sowing and you and I didn't move to sow. And then you act like the father holding you back. Children, the Lord going to pit over three, over three overflows of money in your life this year. Over three. I didn't say one. 
I didn't say two. I said over three. The father going to plant financial overflow in your path. Now, let me speak to some of y'all in the back. That got the hearing aid on. <laughs> that only hear what you want to hear. And I don't care what you say. Every woman like that. I'm joking around. I'm playing around. <laughs> oh, just want, I just wanted to get you angry. Shut up. I'm about to bring you here to bring you there. Over three for those of y'all in the back. Listen, watch this here. It's going to come to you in an opportunity. It's going to come to you in visible money. It's going to come to you in favor with men. I'm going to tell you this and listen to me. The Lord always upgrading you financially because that's his desire. He want to take your money up. So you know how sometimes you, you get certain income? The Lord be like, nah, it's time for you to get some more money in your hands. I don't just want you to sow. And then I'm believing God for America. No, no, I want to put in your power to make more money. I experienced this in my life. I remember sowing. Then the Lord pitted me in position to make more money. I remember when I was man, I was working at a job. Man, I remember when I got my first paycheck, it was like 400. I got my second paycheck, it was 800. I said, oh my God, oh my gosh. But what I had did was I took the 400 and I sold it. And I ain't tell my mama nothing. You know how you woman try to ask questions, try to get questions out? I slapped my mother with a hundred. Not literally. I slapped down the hundred on the floor. That's what I did. On the floor with, with I slapped down. <laughs> I ain't tell I didn't tell my mother that I, I I had sold the rest. I ain't tell my mother. But I had sold I had sold now I already had a hundred on me, mind you. I sold the whole four hundred. I gave my mother a hundred. But I had already had the 400. I sold it. I got back my check next week. I had $800. I was like, oh, oh my. Boy, I was the richest man on the earth. You can't tell me nothing. I was rich, boy. Boy, I was hanging out with Bill Gates in my mind. Now nah, I was with them. You can't tell me nothing. We was eating some barbecue. Bill said that he not going to eat too much sauce because he got high blood pressure. Then I was hanging with Bill Gates. They all saying Kevin Gates came through. And when Kevin Gates came through, he hit me with the, for the love of Allah. And I didn't know what he was talking about. I turned my head and I thought I heard him say Creflo Dollar. So I thought that he was saying that he that's his pastor. I turned my head and for the love of Allah, I heard Creflo Dalla. And so I had to, oh man, you go, you like Creflo too? You like Creflo too, brother? He didn't understand what I was saying. Because he was always trying to sing. I don't know what y'all doing. Bill Gates over here eating chicken wings. Like, come on, Kevin. I ain't come for you to lullaby me. All right, I'm going back to Bill. All right, because he got some bills. You, you, you about to make me lose all my bills. You can't tell me now. I got that $800. I was the richest man in the world. And since I got that $800, and I, I, I felt like, oh, shoot. Oh, shoot. I can breathe, boy. And then watch this. I was quickened by the Holy Ghost. You know what happens when you get quickened? God reminds you. Of a spiritual weapon. Saints. Quickening means that God reacquaints you with power. He reacquaints you with wisdom. He reacquaints you with anointing. That's the powerful thing about the quickening power of Jesus. Because it's him repositioning you. Reacquainting you with, with something that is effective in the spirit realm. 
That's why when you're about to go worry, he quick he quickens you with faith. You say, nah, I'm either going to prophesy this and change this around in the spirit realm. Or if God wants this for me to drink of this cup, I'm going to drink of the cup. And what am I going to worry about? See, saints, you got to get this in your mind. Either I can turn this around with my spiritual weapons or if God want me a drink of the cup, so be it. Praise God. Hallelujah. And so I took that 800. I handled stuff. And then I went into sewing and I went into sewing and saints. I remember one time I got a paycheck and watch this here. My boss liked me for some reason. I wasn't in conversation with them. I didn't hang out with them. My boss just liked me. Say, I like your personality. I just like you. And, and my boss said, would you come work on Saturday with me? And that, that, that. And I came to work. I helped my boss out. Never reject an opportunity to increase favor with someone you assigned to. You heard what I just said? I said never reject the opportunity to increase favor with somebody you assigned to. If they ask you, hey, 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 would you clean my ankles? Don't say, oh, how we do that? What you mean you want me to break your ankles like I'm Allen Iverson? You want me to, what you mean? You Did you mean to clean or did you mean shimmy shake, do the ball around? And that's what I'm talking about. What do you mean? Do you want me to scrub them mugs? I mean, y'all know if somebody scrubbed the back of your heels, that's going to be the end of the world. How many of y'all know that if somebody scrub your heels, every baby in every nursery home going to wake up? How many of y'all know that if you if somebody scrub your heels, that they're going to call 911 in the white neighborhood because they're going to say somebody's shooting? We heard love and hip hop going on in that house. Somebody's shooting in there. Somebody got a taser. Saints, how many of y'all know that if, G, if you was one of Jesus' disciples, he would have passed over you when he was scrubbing feet? <laughs> Peter said, Lord, you ain't got to scrub my feet. Jesus said, thank you. I was about to tell you anyway, brother. You, you got them big old ham hocks in the back. <laughs> you, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. You read my mind. I was about to tell you anyway. Shoot. You ain't going to cut my hand. I'm going to let them cut my hand when I'm getting crucified. You're not going to cut them before time. I'm going to let them stay sharp right now. I ain't going to let you cut them before time. Shoot. But saints, Jesus so loving. He didn't, he picked one of the most dirtiest parts of their body. <laughs> well, I hope that's true for most of y'all. Uh, I think I'm hoping. The Bible said faith, hope, and love. All right. I'm in the hope realm for that. I'm hoping. <laughs> All right. And and Jesus took one of the filthiest parts of their body. Because that's where they was walking. Remember, when you walk, the dust hit those open toe shoes. <laughs> Imagine Peter with them 99 cent slippers <laughs> and, and, and them open toe shoes. And, and he was just walking, walking around with the thongs on his feet. And, and every time he lifted up his thongs, <laughs> every time he lifted up, <laughs> every time he lifted up his thongs, every time he lifted up another thong. All of a sudden, just filthiness, just all of a sudden. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Saints, you imagine, what if they didn't call it Sanders? They're like, the brothers was up there trying to play Jerusalem basketball. Thoughts of, bro, I can borrow your thongs. <laughs> I can borrow your thongs. Now, I just need it for a minute. I'm just about to cross up Jared. 
And Gerardo is over here too. We about to cross them up. Just give it a little thongs. Can I borrow some thongs? I'm just going to buy. Just, I just need the thongs for a couple minutes. I'm going to get the thongs back to you. You know, and I'll let you hold my thongs when I buy some thongs. All right, I get paid next week. All right, we over in the marketplace. I... <laughs> and Jesus picked the nastiest part of their body and said, I'm going to minister to that. Think about that. The nastiest part of their body. I'm going to release my ability on that. Yeah. Powerful stuff. Powerful stuff. And remember what the Lord Jesus said. If you don't let me wash your feet, I have no part with you. I'm going to tell you this. Most times your feet, is it can be connected to people that God don't want in your life. And that's what's keeping you filthy before God. Because that. Connection is not increasing you. It's not taking you higher. And company can be your feet, your filthy feet that Jesus is trying to clean. Your mindset can be your feet that Jesus is trying to clean. Your emotions can be your feet that Jesus is trying to clean. Your uh, over planning, overthinking can be your feet that Jesus is trying to clean. And the feet, it, it, you won't let him access the feet. And, and you say, I ain't going to let you touch my feet, Jesus. And Jesus say, if, if you don't let me touch your feet, I have nothing to do with you. Sometimes your finances is your feet. Do you know that you can have filthy finances? Because you haven't purified your finances through sowing. So, so your provision is filthy. You got dirty money. You got dirty provision. You got dirty substance. You never purified. You never became a financial dove. Huh? Huh? Because you're still wearing a financial glove. And you don't want the Spirit of God to make contact with your hands and put oil on there. Anoint your hands with oil. you wearing a financial glove. You won't become a financial dove. Sometimes your feet is your finances. Wow. 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 Somebody, somebody right on the line. Wealth training. Wealth training. Sometimes your feet is your finances. Jesus can't touch that. He can't purify that. He can't cleanse that. Because seed blocking demons ruling you. Fear ruling you. Budgets ruling you. You can't honor your God. The devil deciding what you sow. No, I'm a sower. You can't decide what I sow, Satan. I'm a sower. I'm going to sow the way I feel it. I ain't going to sow the way that you try to bound me. No, no, no. I'm about to break open in this budget, boy. You're not going to stop me in 2020. 20, You're not going to stop me in 2020. I'm going to break open in my finances. You're not going to decide what type of money I can. Be, before this year is over, I'm going to be walking around with money bags from King Jesus like the word of God promised me. The thousandfold blessing, the hundredfold return. I'm going to be walking around up in here, up in here. You're not going to stop me. I'm a blessing of Abraham's seed. Abraham wasn't broke. I'm not going to be broke. I choose to walk in the wisdom anointing, the wealth anointing, the riches anointing. Wealth and riches shall be in my house. I'm going to live by this word of God. Ain't no word going to pass over me. The Lord let men ride over my head, but he has brought me out into a wealthy place. Psalm 66 verse 12. I'm not having it. You're not going to stop me. and You're not going to decide what I sow. You're not going to decide how I worship my God. I'm going to truly worship God with all of me. And I'm going to get results. I decree and I declare my bosom is activated right now. I activate my bosom with seed. I activate my bosom with honor. My bosom is activated. Money coming to me right now. Every wealth vault is open in my life. The wealth vault. The treasure box of the Lord is open over my life. Silver and gold from heaven is manifesting on earth for me. I receive financial favor, financial freedom. 
the minister of finances is ministering for me. I'm giving y'all some decrees on here. Prosperity angels are handing me prosperous money. Every door in the spirit that belonged to me financially, I walk through that door. I receive an apostolic anointing, an apostolic dominion over money. I am a money attractor. Creative abundance is occurring for me. I receive ideas. Profitable ideas, wealthy ideas. I receive ideas in my mind that brings me into more abundance. I receive supernatural ideas. I receive witty inventions. Profiting power is saturating me. I have a strong anointing on my life for money. I receive the teachings of the Holy Ghost to prosper and to profit. I receive the profit's reward on my finances. I receive the hundredfold return on my provision, on my finances. I'm living in the hundredfold return. I'm living in life and life more abundantly. Unstoppable financial abundance is occurring for me. I walk through every wealth gate right now and I take a hold of the financial story of God for my life. The financial glory and the financial story of God is sitting on me right now. Gospel money is sitting on my life. Nobody decide what I sow. I'm not underneath no budget. I'm a sower. I'm breaking out of budgets. I'm breaking out of limitations financially. I don't trust my job. I trust my God. And my God is my source above my job. My God just put this money in my hands to see what I'm going to do with this. I choose to follow his system. And I choose to receive provision from my God. I shall live off of my God, not off of my job. I have what my God gives to me and I won't need my job. I'll be elevated to a higher assignment, a higher calling. Glory to God. Every promotion, I take it in Jesus' name. I'm walking through promotions. Promotion power is sitting on me. I'm being promoted. I have favor with God and with men. I receive increase of the favor of God in my life. I take the spirit of understanding. I receive the anointing of good understanding. I attract favor. If I attract favor, I attract finances. Money coming to me right now. Large money is loosed in my life. Money, I speak to you because you're a person. In the name of Jesus, I loose you to flow freely in my life on the earth. I'm speaking from heaven now. I'm speaking from my wealth gates and I loose all the wealth that I see around me. Silver and gold saturate me on the earth. See, now we're dealing from the apostolic realm, from the heavenly seat. Financial increase that I see around me right now, all the silver and gold around me right now in this wealth gate, I command you to manifest and materialize on the earth. I speak you into existence and I prophesy your appearance. Wealth, riches, abundance, and prosperity. I command you on the earth for me in my pathway right now. Today is the most prosperous day of my life. Tomorrow is the most prosperous day of my life. The day after tomorrow is the most prosperous day of my life. I make my way prosperous and I decree I have good success. Psalm 65 verse 11. I'm a minister of this um, another time. I'm going to decree this over you right now. Because JHM, this is going to happen. All my words come to pass. That I speak over you. Psalm 66, 65 verse 11. Thou crownest the year with goodness. And your paths drip with abundance. I pronounce this over your life. And I'm, I'm going to deal with it stronger. 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 I pronounce that over you. Watch what it say here. It say you crown the year with bounty and your carts overflow with abundance. Your carts. Look what it say right here. 
Thou crownest the year with goodness, and your paths drop fatness. I decree this over you in Jesus' name. I decree that your year is crowned with goodness. The prophet has declared it. Ain't no demon got enough power to overturn my word. I wish Shaquita would. Ah. <laughs> uh -huh. I, I wish Shaquita would stand up, rise up again. I wish a demon would try to challenge what I say. I set that demon on fire like a bona fide arsonist. I prophesy this over your life. The only one that can lift this word is you. I decree Psalm 65 verse 11 over you. That your path will drip with abundance. Drip in financial abundance. Right. Yeah. Dripping wealth grace. Dripping in money cometh. Dripping in prosperity. 